Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Black Myth Wukong Let's Play. So we are back in the forest before the temple. We did get knocked out by, I guess translated to be the monk from the sea. The tentacle guy. And he was going to give us a transformation if we beat him. We kind of used Spellbinder and handicapped ourselves for that part of the fight. So I actually changed our build back. We have Immobilized back. I think we'll do a final swap once we get to Yellowbrow because I think it's going to be great against him since he has some abilities to turn your spells against you and the fact that this particular effect was designed to counter him from the original journey. There are a lot of Jensen's here and looks like there's a little treasure at the end there. I think this is where we get one of the Jensen monster transformations. Is it this guy? Nope, his hands are not glowing. Ooh, how many hits does he have? I thought three was a lot. Is it you? Oh, wow. It's definitely you. Oh, different moveset too. This is the two-hit combo. He looks a little drunk. Or maybe a little dizzy from being knocked. Oh, he... that... Okay, I mean, I know he's a Jensen monster, but the way he fell reminded me of Drunken Fist style. Oh, roots? Something with roots? Okay, the whole area has roots now. Ooh, he summoned a little one. Multiple little... Whoa, 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 whoa. I assume the little ones will go away if he dies. And he died of the fire. He dropped the armor for us. Wait, actual armor? Huh. We increase our stamina cap after drinking. Frost resistance. I don't think we're using this. Oh, by the way, in between episodes, I did, uh, aside from switching the spells, I did craft this arm piece and leg piece that required the gold thread. Uh, it gives a two-piece bonus for the invincibility where we can uh, pick up a little more staff stance, but really just wanted the, the stats. The thousand year Jensen seed, so the higher quality Jensen seed. I think we had the regular one already. And he's definitely an elite entry here. The elder Jensen monster. There was a story of a herbal, m m herbal merchant from a city that he shares that he claim is the secret of his cousin's family. His cousin used to be, you know, mountain scavengers who collected Jensen. But for reasons that no one knows, he abandoned this craft and became a lumberjack instead. And even though... It didn't get them rich because obviously firewood doesn't sell as good as Jensen. Everyone in the family seems to live a long time for that particular clan, his cousin's clan or his cousin's branch of the family. And, there, and there's a story that ever since his cousin was young, there would be an elder who looked, you know, who's dressed really poorly, not tidied up, maybe a little unclean mismatched clothes that would come to the uh, house and be a guest every time he comes the family will prepare you know good food good drinks and allow him to eat it by himself so it's not even the feast with the family they're just treating this elder every time he shows up at this time his this was when his cousin was young and this was happening his cousin hated this old man but he doesn't say this 
Oh, well, he hated the old man because he doesn't say anything. The old man doesn't say anything and also acts up after he gets drunk. And his cousins just think, for whatever reason, his family's allowing this, you know, swindler to come and eat good food and drink good alcohol from his house. Until this one time, the great-grandmother of his cousin, right, they live a long time, great-grandmother, caught a cold and couldn't get up anymore. And it looks like she was about to die because she's very old. And it just happens that this elder came by the house to drink. And when the father of the household, the father, the, so the father of the cousin, I guess technically be the storyteller's uncle, uh, shared the story of how their great-grandmother is currently sick, the elder who comes to eat goes back into the courtyard, uh, puts his hand down the soil and grabs down below, and vines started to, you know, spawn from the soil, and out comes a little branch of a leaf. And this little branch grows quickly, rapidly, until it forms seeds and flowers. And then this old man plucks it out. And immediately it looks like a Jensen that's a thousand years old. So he rapidly grew a 1,000 year old Jensen. And then they used it to make soup for the great grandmother. After she drinks it, she feels a lot better and has recovered and still alive today. And this is the moment when the cousin understood. And from that point on, he treated this elder with respect as though he was family. There was one time that this cousin wanted to invite this herb merchant to go to the mountains, to move into the mountains with him, but the herb merchant refused, right? So the storyteller here refused to join his cousin. And the merchant says, even though their family lives a long time, every day they eat the simplest food and drink the crudest tea and they live in the mountains isolated and lonely i prefer to live here in the city so i'm not gonna go and uh whenever he shares this story people think it's just uh maybe an interesting made-up story and no one knows if it's real or not well, the background story for the Jensen is interesting, but what's more interesting is the last statement. Would you rather have a long life, but a very simple, very mundane, boring one, or you live in excitement in the city and give up longevity, essentially? All right, we actually picked up two seeds now. The pear and this higher quality Jensen and we should make a trip oh we also got a transformation we can spawn little Jensen monster to come out and fight how many two it's kind of like our clone ability and the passive is he will increase the health of any clones being summoned. So I guess this includes our clones. The interesting tactic, monkey clone plus Jensen clones with higher health fighting against the enemy. Ooh, a new alcohol type. And it's a gold tier one too. Ah, the ox horn. So this is made from an ox horn, if you look at the material. And, oh, actually, maybe a ram horn. But, ooh, is this an ox or is this? I think this is an ox. But the material, this is an actual artifact. I think I've seen this in a museum before, uh, this particular one. So every drink recovers 36% of our life and a little bit of mana. Hello. So we lose one slot, but we get mana recovery. I think we're swapping this. Oh, there's two regular Jensen monsters guarding him.
I don't think there is much else on this map. I mean, nothing super collectible. Maybe a couple upgrade resources that I might have missed. But I think in terms of uh, transformation spirits, items, accessories and whatnot, I actually think we have the forest area all covered. And I think the plan right now is we take a teleport to the 6-6 village. It's a bat somewhere. And then afterwards we teleport back to the temple, clear out the right side, deal with the monk that killed us, and then go to the left side, which is where we should probably find the fox quest and get that done. And then head our way to the main hall. I think we're gonna change our alcohol here. Maybe look to upgrade some armor. I'm a little hesitant to upgrade armor because there's only a limited amount of resources you can get, especially higher tier upgrade materials per run. Uh, the game allows for, you know, once you do a new game plus, you can get more resources and some of the crafting material you probably need two runs to finish. And I do wanna finish everything and get platinum or get all the achievement for the game. Technically not platinum because we're playing on Steam. Alright, let's get his uh, free stuff. And... We have a few more. We have three. We're just gonna boost a couple more defensive points. I'm gonna skip the animation. As you can see, I've been boosting health and defense. We're we're the tanky monkey build. And then we're gonna change our alcohol. And we should have enough. Okay, so we're gonna just upgrade this gourd one more time. We need three more of that resource to get it to the max level of nine. And then once we get oh, the appearance changed quite a bit. Once we get to nine, there is a, I guess, not really a quest, but there's a way to upgrade it to a 10 drink uh, kind of rare gourd. Okay, so we, we saved up five. But by this time, do I really still want this? I'm not sure. So the ones with the gold tier quality, you can't upgrade them anymore. Makes sense. Oh, as much as, hold on, as much as I like the mana, it's not useful for me for this particular fight because we're gonna go Spellbinder against the Yellow Brow. I'm actually not going to use the 5 on this. I decided that we got stuff that, you know, got more slots. I'm actually more curious to see 36% and the appearance is changing every time. Wow, the appearance. 5 years storage. So basically it's still coconut water, but we're getting more vintage on it. And you do get a second slot here. 40%. 10-year. 43% 18 year 46% that's a very minor upgrade but there's two more levels to this yeah we bought out his shop already uh, we should give him the seeds first. We have new seeds. And yeah, we can collect the ones that are ready. I <laughs> can come back frequently. Sounds like something, you know, parents would say. So 
So here's where I'm a little hesitant on upgrading the armor pieces. It's really nice. Like I upgraded this one time and uh, you can see the second upgrade. We're going to get a lot of defense here and the resources. I'm a little concerned about the higher tier resources. The lower tier ones we can farm pretty easily. We can even buy from him. But the higher tier one, I feel like if we spend them here, like the gold thread to upgrade this, if we spend it here, we can't craft the new ones that we want. And then not having one feels worse than having like a really elite one in terms of just collecting. Obviously having a really elite one's good for, you know, battle effects and whatnot. But essentially that's where I'm kind of torn. So I don't think we're going to do... We're going to do any upgrades. Alright, so that takes care of that. Now we can go back to the temple and take care of business there. Alrighty, back at the temple. So I think that's the... Wait, which way is the entrance? That's the entrance, and we were covering the right side first. Where we died. Not enough stamina, I'm gonna wait for the recharge. We didn't go up this path last time. Well, that is a weird statue. So it's a Buddha on top, most likely of Mila, the future Buddha. And he's standing on top of Xuanwu, which is a Taoist deity. The turtle with the snake for a tail. Okay, I think we do want to go back to where we were, but I don't know how we missed this earlier. Well, that was a good hit. We got a crit there. There's a will here. We don't need a heal. I'm just going to take it. I mean, it could be seen as a statue to celebrate the conquest of the turtle and the snake general by the yellow brow. But it is just one of those statues you'll never see in real life. Oh, it leads to the... Oh no, at least to a different place. We have not been here. We don't want to disrupt the two that's moving around just yet. Okay, there's one guy right there. Everywhere else seems clean. Nope, nope, nope. Not clean. Thank <laughs> you. 
He's blind. I don't think he chases us. Oh, those two did something. Feels like they released cold air on the ground. And they sense us now. We got a little bit of frost on us, but no damage. Alright, there's still one more behind. No, oh, there's more than one more behind. There's another one here. Wherever that blind guy went. Ah, Void Knot. We have the upgrade for maybe... We can upgrade non-able one more time. Before we face off against... Yellow Brow. I think we missed the will back there. He's gonna throw it. I do wonder if this upper level is connected to the upper level where we previously died. Ooh, another chest. Less fancy looking. Not expecting much. Yep. And I think there is a will back here that we didn't absorb. Someone's saying something. It's not him. There's another enemy here. Ooh. Where did you come from? It's gonna throw it? No? Alright. Landed our parry. but monsters here. Alright, I guess really nothing here. Wait, this is where we faced... This is where we died. So they are connected. Didn't have this last time. Oh, that timing. We have no health when we go back to our other form. That's slightly problematic.
Oh, this is bad. Hold on. Okay. Damage reduction. He's applying a lot of frost to us. Nearly frozen again. Hmm, he doesn't... We're almost frozen again. Wow. Uh-oh. Ooh. He's hard. It's the constant freezing that's getting us. And there's not a lot of windows to punish. Alright, we'll go from the other path this time. They all respawn, I think. I don't think there's any unique drop from him, but those uh, blind monks that we'll meet, as well as... I think they have a unique drop that we can pick up. So we want to fight them on the way up as many times as it's going to take. Hopefully we will not die again. He knocked us out of the transformation. <laughs> Want to see what the three move hit for that is? That's the item. We got it. Be enchant. It's a headgear. It's the blind. We have an easier time to get the perfect dodge. Oh, sign me up and better defense. Like I said, most of the enemies here, particularly in the temple area, have unique drops. So basically they're giving us a more lenient window for what consider a perfect dodge. Super useful actually. Ow. They're catching us at the end of our animation. Or else we would dodge like that. Yeah. 
it is a lot easier to trigger the perfect dodge. Alright, maybe that's... Oh, we get to fight him again! He also has a unique drop, I believe. And he's harder to get because I think there's only a, a couple instances where you can actually fight him here. And we also don't want to use too much of our mana and resources in fighting him. Because uh, the Tentacle guy is giving us a lot of trouble. I think he's going to allow a free hit. Oh, never mind. That fire is pretty big AoE. Too bad. Might not have dealt with this Lotus. I actually can't remember. Did we fight this thing earlier? Ooh. I don't think we've been here before, but there's also nothing here. Kick is from the first light. Oh. I mean, Kata's mid animation. And non Able's back. Honestly, aside from being a little difficult to pull off with the the buttons, because you have to like go from light attack into right plus left trigger. If we get used to it, it can be a pretty nice thing to like weave it into your regular combos. Because it comes back so quickly. Like this. I oh, can't see. One at a time, one at a time. They can't see us. Oh, 
want to use too much before the fight but ow we are gonna get one more spark after killing these three things in front of us We're not friendly. That's my question. Alright. We'll use those points before the fight. On what, though, is a good question. Uh, we can finish up the attack damage. Hmm. If we don't kill him this time, we might look into chugging some med that has frost resist because that is probably what gets us the most. Gotta wait for your stamina to come back. Got the parry. Ooh, this is not good. Okay, I thought he was gonna get us mid animation. I mean, he has a range, and we don't have a range. Oh, what is this? I can wait for my cooldown, you know, for halt, or for, for immobilize. He's never gonna hit us. Oh. Ooh, this is nice. What? To stay near him? Puts us into frost? Wait, wait, we're about to freeze. Oh, come on. And we're just like slow. Nope, nope. Oh. It's the frost effect. We're like super slowed. Alright, gonna explore which Dun can help us here. The only enemy I think we'll fight is probably the four legged Jingong. Because I think I'm after one of the drops that he has. This is probably what we need to chug. Hmm. 
Removes frost effect, also gives us frost resistance after using it. That's probably the only thing that can help us. I also feel like Guantra's transformation isn't really worth it. We're not getting any damage out. And then if we have to fight close range, he just freezes us because he emits like frost. So... Hmm, should we actually go back to the shrine and pick up a different transformation? But who would actually help? Our transformation, the rock, still close range. The rat, still close range. Even though it's fire, it's still close range. The tiger, also close range. Oh! Uh, don't do that. Uh, we gotta kill the... Thunder Elders, or else they disrupt this fight way too much. It's nice, most of the enemy on this way are blind, and they're not gonna come after you. Uh, he's gonna turn around and spit fire from his tummy, right? I don't think it's gonna hit. But he's dead. And no drops. I do have to say that perfect dodge probability increase the blindfold. Probably my favorite accessory. Oh. Uh, can we just get out of his range? Maybe not. Ow. I mean, the good news is just a matter of one heal. Keeping distance and then halting him with the immobilize. Ooh. We gotta let that cold wear off. I'm gonna wait for the immobilize comeback. We do about one third of his health per immobilize. See, if we get close to him, the frost start building up right away. So he has range, and he's also pretty good up close because of the frost. That didn't work out, and we picked up so much frost already. Are we supposed to? Okay, okay, okay. Which one is it? Is it up? 
I think that's... Hold on. We need to find an opportunity to drink it. There we go. Almost dead. Finally. This looks very different from all the other that we have absorbed so far. He's a full transformation. Okay, that makes more sense. I guess we get to throw snowballs just like him. And that should be the entire right side because we came from the other side as well. He was the last piece. Now we get to go cover the left side. Um, I'm just actually, since we didn't clear any of the monster except for the Jingong along the way, might as well use the teleport back. And now we can go check out the left side of the temple. Maybe take a look at the transformation as well. There's a couple things we can do. We got a new Void Knot and... At least right now, I kind of think I want to upgrade... Bu Neng. The damage is not high. We're basically using him for the passive. Especially with the Spellbind. Uh, we can upgrade uh, the, the frog a little bit because they don't use any other special item except for, you know, each frog. So we got it to the third tier. Alright, we'll take it. The defrost medicine help quite a bit. Hi, Shang Sung. Many years ago, when the Yellow Brow was riding a boat across the bitter sea, he discovered that on the body of the boat, when oh, he when he was uh, disembarking from the boat, he noticed on the body of the boat are these fish that are crawling on the body of the boat. And these fish are called Alo, Alo De Yu. Uh, so he, uh, he Lo, he so he Lo De Yu are basically the ten tail goldfish, right? It has one head and ten bodies. By bodies here, they just mean the long strands of tail. I think uh, it's it's from the classic of Mountain and Sea, uh, ancient text with a lot of mythical creatures. But I think it takes a lot of inspiration from like actual animal, be like the squid where they look at the strands and they think that's the body coming off of one head. And when this fish sees yellow brow come, it bows down and makes a sound and expresses desire to follow yellow brow and escape the bitter sea. Yellow brow laughs, uh, smiles back and says, you guys look quite odd. If it was others, it's, if it's not him, they definitely will not take you in. But luckily, you guys met me, and uh, I don't take in normal people because why would that be interesting? So they took he so he took in these fish monsters as his disciple, taught them how to wear clothes, taught them how to uh, learn language. So the tentacles that he have are the ten tails, right? So that's why it feels like a, it's like almost like an octopus because you have the eight tails, or it's, it's more like a squid, right? It's basically like a squid. You have the longer tentacles on the outside, and there's usually two main tentacles down in the middle, which are the two on its back, and then the chest has the other eight. 
uh, regardless, it's formed a human humanoid form. That's the form that we're fighting it. And every day they cultivate and meditate within the lesser Western world here in the temple. One particular fish monster, basically one of this group that joined Yellowbrow, was the most fit, but also had the most interesting personality uh, in that after he was able to gain some skills, he started to ambush all around the temple, seeking to strike at Yellowbrow. And his abilities that he used against Yellowbrow are, you know, he doesn't hold back. He's taking like the most fatal hits. But Yellowbrow is delighted with this activity as he's entertained by getting ambushed everywhere by one of his disciples. And every time they fight, you know, he, he fights seriously. Usually, all it takes is a wave of his, you know, uh, wolf teeth club, and he's able to sweep aside this ambush. But despite this defeat, or frequent defeat, he understood that close-range combat is not his strength against the yellow brow. So he came up with a technique of throwing snowballs, and quite accurately as well. So one time in the forest, even Yellowbrow got struck by a couple of snowball and nearly froze into ice. So basically it nearly got enough frost points to get him frozen. Now Yellowbrow did not get angry over this fact, but he got even more delighted as he gave him a new nickname. The monk who, uh, who is from above the sea, Hai Shang Sung. Uh, and then so basically the one that we fought here. Every day he's just in charge of cleaning the courtyard. And the purpose of giving him this job, which is a pretty easy job, is that it gives him more free time to try to ambush people. Especially, you know, Yellowbrow himself. He wants to get challenged frequently. And he laments that everyone follows the same master. But depending on one's, you know, uh, understanding, one's desires, one's motivation... The treatment is also often very different. I mean, this is also like when Wukong had his master. You know, there's many other, you know, disciples from Puti, but Wukong is the one who took the initiative and learned a lot of the skills. Slightly increased frost damage. Not surprised. Regular attack is the tentacle. And then the heavy is fleeing both tentacle up. So basically the first three hit combo that we often dealt with. There is a right trigger plus X to do to conjure up a magic and summon a frozen tundra beneath you that sustain. Okay, so basically this is what's causing the cold when you get close to it. If we're using our regular attack or our heavy attack while on frozen soil, so I guess either the one we summon or when we're in actual snow, we will throw snowballs. Interesting. I mean, right now we're still pretty heavily skewed towards fire damage. Wait, how do we... That's the shrine, and I guess we just never saw this. All right, now we go left. Well, we beat the big version. How hard can the little version be? Wait, am I already getting frozen? I think so, we were already slowed. most difficult part is them trying to freeze you. Like right now we have cold air being summoned by those incense greeters. Alright, he's down, but these guys need to die too. Over... before we freeze here. It's mostly the tentacle guy.
We'll check the corner before moving on. I think for the all four elemental status, Frost is probably my least favorite. Because it just takes you out of your action. Like with Thunder and Lightning, it's just like you take more damage. Fire damage over time, poison damage over time. I need to get to his level. So this is it on the far left side. I think we have to go through that middle building now. Unless we miss something over there? I don't think so. Oh wait. I don't think we missed anything, right? We walked over here. This was all ice. Yeah, I guess we do have to go through the middle now. The nice thing about this is we actually get stamina recovery when we are in that transfer form state. Nothing to loot here. Ooh, that's a lot of Thunder Elders. Four to be exact. I think they start zapping us the moment we walk out. Yeah. 
Yep, this is gonna be annoying. Ooh, that's different. Okay. The problem is we gotta climb back up, but not a big deal. Ow. I think we still want to go left first, but the question is, are there any loot on this side or that side? Is that a chest? No. But I think we can break those. I think we want to go into that building. That building is where the fox is going to get her business done. That looks like a side room for sure. Alright, we're just going to check out this area outside and we probably will end the episode here. And we'll come back and deal with the fox quest line. And probably Yellowbrow as well. I think we are at the end. There's not much left. Might do a little bit of uh, farming some of these enemies inside the temple in between episodes. Not for levels, but just for the drop. There is a you know unique accessory just like the blindfold we picked up for quite a few of the enemies here on this particular stage. And you just gotta keep hitting them because it's just a low percentage drop. Alright, we're just gonna finish things off with him. And we'll come back here next time. So, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you all then. Bye!